Hey, what's up everyone? I'm Carl D'Souza. Welcome to my YouTube channel. Hey, what's up guys? So today we're going to take a look at how to use JavaScript to move to the next stage of a business process flow. Let's take a look at it. What we're going to do, we're going to go through this blog post that I posted out there. And this talks about how we can create a quick business process flow how we can throw it onto the account form, and then how we can use this JavaScript to uh, go through to a different stage in the form. So let's take a look at how to do this. So first thing we will do is we will uh, go to flow.microsoft.com and we're gonna create one of these uh, business process flows and uh, let's do it. So I'm gonna jump up here, I'm gonna go to flow.microsoft.com and once it loads, make sure you're in the correct org, then go over to My Flows. And from here, we will click on Business Process Flows, and this will show us a list of all the business process flows in our system. We will create a new one. Let's click on the New button, and let's give this a name. We're going to call it Account BPF for Business Process Flow. And when we tab off this, it's going to give us the name of this new entity that will be created. Um, so it's going to create this entity and it's going to actually store the business process flow information inside there that we will be able to use this on the entity that we choose. And we can see here it says choose an entity and I will search for account and I'm going to run this on the account entity. So I'm going to click create. And this brings up the uh, business process flow designer and you can see here it's given us one stage and there's nothing in this stage. And so I think what I'm going to do, I'm going to create three stages and we'll put some steps inside these stages. So let's just give this a name. We'll call this stage one. Click apply down here and let's go and add another stage here and we'll click the plus sign. It gives us another stage. We'll call this one stage two and click apply again and let's do the same thing one more time and we'll get three stages on here and we got stage three okay so three stages that's all good let's click on details here click on the first step and this is where we get to add the fields that we will uh, require the user to enter in um, optional or required uh, so we'll add in these fields and then we can finish up this business process flow. So I'm going to put the account number here as the uh, first one. Let's click apply and then let's go into the second stage. We'll get the user to enter in an account name, select, click apply. And then the third one, let's give it an account rating. Uh, click on the step and select account rating and click apply. So we have three stages. We have fields within each stage. We should be all set. Let's click validate. Looks good. Let's click save. Looks good. Let's click activate and activate. So now we should have, once this is done, a business process flow that's ready to use on the account entity. So that's the next thing we're going to take a look at. Wait for this to come back. Great, looks good. So let's go over to D365. Type in my environment name and this will take me over to the apps homepage. And that's cool. I'm going to select um, one of the apps here. I'm going to go with this one. And it's forcing me to the uh, UCI app, which is great. That's what I wanted. Let's get rid of this message. And let's click on accounts. And let's go ahead and create a new account. So we click new. Great, so we have a new account record and there is our account BPF business process flow that we created. So three stages and click on any given stage and we see that it has the uh, step in here as well. So the account number step and then stage and stage two and three will have their fields as well. So that's great. Um, you know, let's do a real quick test here if we wanted to save this 
and we can go ahead and enter in some information here and we can click on save and once that's saved so we can come back in here and go to the next stage and we have an account name already go to the next stage and the account rating we can select the default value fine and then we'll just go ahead and click finish and we've finished so those are the three stages so that's great um, let's take a look at how we would actually do this in JavaScript if we were to advance these stages automatically based on something that happens um, and we wanted to use JavaScript to do that so the first thing we'll take a look at is the API for this so let's go ahead and browse out to the API so what I'm gonna do I'm gonna type in uh, my URL here and I will also add API slash data slash v9.1 that's the version of d365 I'm using and um, remember we called our new entity new underscore account BPF right so let's go search for this new underscore account BPF and then we're gonna add an S because it's plural and let's click on this and we see we get some data back from our OData service so because we only created one we know that this is our uh, our current one let's go ahead and do a new one here so I'm gonna click on new account and let's give this a name and we're gonna call this um, if we go to the summary we're gonna call this test ABC let's go ahead and click save and we know that we're at stage one of this business process flow right so if I were to come back to my API here and refresh this see we get another record that comes out here and we can see here that based on the modified by this is actually the one that I just created um, I knew that the previous one was a little earlier so um, that's cool so this is the one that we want down on the bottom here and we have this business process flow instance ID so this is the GUID off the record that we um, just created for this business process flow okay so I'm going to copy that and let's throw that into a notepad I'm going to search for notepad here and we're just going to throw that into here and let's call this the BPF ID okay so that's our ID um, and so you know what does this actually mean let's go ahead and take a look at advanced find real quick and we will see that there has been an entity that's been created for this business process flow and these are actually the records that we're looking at so if we use this list here we can see um, account BPF so that's our entity that we just created right let's click on this let's look at the results and we see that there are two entities here and the first one was for the account test that one was uh, active on stage three and it's actually finished now awesome and then the one we just created is on stage one and it's active all right so these records are the uh, records that we're seeing here coming back from the OData service so let's take a look at um, the actual business process flow again and let's query that and let's see because um, we're going to need to know the IDs of the individual stages as well so that we can use those in the JavaScript so back here in our business process for designer if you look in the URL we see that there's this ID field right let's grab this one and I'm gonna throw this into a notepad as well and let's call this the um, business process flow ID and you know just to distinguish these two let's call this one instance because this is actually the instance ID and I can't really type here so there's the instance ID and this is the actual ID so we will query the OData web service again and let's do a query here on the process stages and we're gonna grab uh, some fields here so I'm gonna jump back to my blog and let's go down a little bit and you can see we've done all these things great and here is where we are 
this is the um, query that we want. So we're going to grab this. So this is going to look at the process stages and it's going to give us the IDs of these stages. Okay. So this is going to be our query and we will replace, um, we'll use this ID here and paste that into this here. And let's go ahead and grab this and put this on this URL here and like so. And then when we run this, we can see what we're getting back is for our business process flow. We have stage three and we have its uh, ID here, right? And then we have stage two, we have its ID, we have stage one and its ID. So I'm going to grab stage two's ID. Let's grab that, put that in our notepad, stage two, and let's grab stage one. And we will put that into here. So great. So now we have these two stages. We have the instance ID. So we know uh, what we need to do here with the JavaScript to, to move it from uh, this first stage to the second stage for this instance. Okay. So now we want to build out our query and we want to put it somewhere. Um, let's go into back over here. We'll jump into uh, advanced settings. We're going to do some JavaScript now and let's go up to uh, customizations. Obviously you would put this into a solution and let's get rid of that message and let's get rid of that one. Those are not relevant. Let's click customize the system and let's click on entities. We will go to account and the account form. So the idea here is we're building out something that will like maybe like when we tab off a field, we're going to get that uh, action or event really to um, to move this business process flow. So let's click on the account main form. We'll put this on there and I'm going to do this on the facts. It's a nice one. I'm going to click change properties. So when someone enters in a fax and they tab off that field, let's go ahead and do something. And let's go and create a new library uh, that's going to have our JavaScript in there. So I'm going to click up here in form libraries. I'll click add. And now I'm going to click new to create a new one. And let's give this a name, new underscore BPF for business process flow. And let's do the same with the display name. And down here, we're going to select script, JScript. Let's go to the text editor. And now we'll be able to drop to write some code. Um, so let's flip back over to the blog and let's grab this code here. So what we see is um, this is some code that we can run and it has a function and let's just go and, and copy this. We'll paste this into our notepad and then let's just go and build this out. So if I throw that in there and let's maximize this. So what this is doing is um, JavaScript function, we are setting the, well, firstly, we're grabbing the form context uh, from the execution context that we'll pass in through the form. Then we will set the two stages. These are the GUIDs of the stages that we grabbed from our OData query. And you can grab those yourselves, um, you know, build out this query yourself so it's dynamic so that you don't actually have to hard code it here. Um, but I'm just kind of doing this to make it easier, right? So next step is the entity. We are going to create an entity here. And what it's looking for is it's uh, looking for this active stage ID. And then we're going to do the, we have to tell it the path that we're traversing here, right? So we are going from stage one to stage two, and we want to end up here in stage two as the active ID, okay? So um, we want to provide that information. The business process flow ID, uh, this is the actual instance ID. So we're going to use that and um, and then we just basically uh, do a patch, right? Send it through. Um, we're using the uh, the get global context to grab the uh, URL off the uh, D365 environment. And we have our web API here. Um, we have our new entity that we created and we're going to pass that along so that it knows that's the one we're updating. And then we just uh, go through, um, send this request through, uh, 
JSON stringify at the bottom for our entity and then we should get a response back okay so let's put this together I'm gonna uh, set up stage one here grab this GUID and copy that throw that in here and once that's done let's go grab stage two grab this one same deal and throw that in here and now we have uh, the BPF instance ID. Let's go grab that and put that in here. I'm going to save that. Um, so let's grab this, grab the whole thing, and we will put this into our JavaScript here. We're going to click OK. And you know what, let's just go back in there. We're gonna grab this, this is advanced BPF. So that's the function name, let's copy that out. We'll click save and we'll publish this and then we'll wire this up to the fax on change event. So that's published. Let's go back over here, um, back to our event. So now let's add this back into our form here we got this uh, new BPF that's all good there's our fax let's click add and let's select the new BPF library we'll click function let's paste that in let's pass the execution context as the first parameter click OK click OK and let's save this and we'll click publish and then we will be ready to test this out so let's go back to our D365 and we'll refresh this. So we've reloaded our uh, account here. Now it has a new JavaScript code. We're still on stage one. Let's go and enter in a fax. And let's tab off it. And we get a success call back. And let's see what happens if we watch our business process flow. This may take a couple of seconds. So we can see now it's jumped over to stage two and uh, our code ran successfully. So, you know, there's a few things you'd probably want to do to improve this. Uh, definitely dynamically look up those IDs. So hopefully you'll find this useful at some point. So that's it, guys. If you like this video, don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe to my YouTube channel, and of course, check out my blog at carldesouza.com. Thank you.